everyone, my name is Shiro. This is the first half of my series where I'm going to explain to you how the FPE works. In this video I'll explain how floating point works and the different operations. First, what is a um, floating point number made of? Floating point number is made of three things, a sine bit, an exponent and a mantissa. There is a norm called IE754 from 1989 I think. <laughs> Um, that basically explains how big the sine, how big the exponent, how big the mantissa is with the given bit set. What I'm gonna focus on mainly is f uh, 32 bit, also called single precision, because that's what my FPU uh, is built with. But there's also half precision, with, which is 16 bit, and double precision, 64 bit, quarter precision, 128 bit, and so on. So let's see, in a 32 bit number, we've got a 1 bit sign, that is this thing. Uh, then we've got a 8 bit exponent. And we've got a 23 bit mantissa. That is 32 bit in total. The exponent also got a bias of 127. Why there is a bias, I'll come to that later. And here in 16 bit, we've also got a 1 bit sign, a 5 bit exponent, and the 11 bit mantissa. and a bias of exactly 15. So let's go to the next step on how to convert a normal binary number to floating point. So that is our current binary number. That is 25 in decimal, 11001. And currently our red X point is right over here. So if we would have a bit on right here, then it would be 25.5. That's not the case though. So what we want to do is shift the number till we've only got one leading one in front. And we will count how many times we've shifted. So that is the first shift. One. That is the second shift. That is two. Third shift. And fourth shift. Now we've got take we've got the number four and this. Now what you want to do is take away the first one. This is a this is the mantissa. And now you want to add four with the bias. So that is in our case this number. And that is how we converted uh, 25 into floating point. Let's do another m number. Then I can properly show you why we need a bias. Okay, so, na so now we've got the number 125. And now how to convert this number in floating point. Instead of shifting to the left, we will now shift the right x point to the right. One, one and two and three. We needed three shifts to the right. Now because now we can remove those. Now this is our mantissa. We we'll just a bunch of zeros. Because we always have a leading one, so we can just leave that out of the um, memory, so we can save one bit. And now, because we shifted to the red X point to the right and not to the left, now we have to subtra 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 uh, <laughs> subtract 3 from 127. And that is why we need the bias. So we can also do 
um, negative um, number smaller than zero. So that would be that as the exponent. And here we have our sign. And here are a bunch of zeros as Matissa. So now you might wonder what is the what is the very first bit for? Well, the very first bit, if it's zero, like here, then it's a positive number. Well, let's just quickly create number that should be that is one. The floating point here we have our bunch of zeros as Matissa. So right now, the sign bit is zero. So our number is plus one. If we now set it to one, then our number is minus one. So it's basically just a switch to set it to negative or positive. That easy. I'm gonna show you how to convert a floating point number into decimal. You will probably need a calculator. Or you can also do it by hand. There are basically two methods. You can either calculate it or you can just kind of backwards engineer the whole thing. So shifting the whole result back. So let's do that. Oh, except if we've got the zero there. Okay, so our number is greater than 127. So we can already see that it's gonna be a positive exponent. So now we're gonna subtract 127, do a minus here, and we will get the result of 3. So our exponent is 3. Now to the mantissa. We also have to change that back to its original form. That is, by the way, called denormalization or uh, normalization. So, in that case, the mantissa is 1.01 1 .01 and a bunch of zeros. And our exponent is 3. Now, either you can do the following you can just shift the, shift the radix point to the right three times. So, 1, 2, and you'll set the zero here and you'll see our result is 10 8 plus 2 or you can take the number like it is right now so 1.25 and calculate it uh, and multiply it by 2 uh, 2 square 3 so 2 times square 3 equals 8 8 times 1.25 uh, equals 10 So now I'm gonna show you how to multiply two numbers. First we need to normalize the exponent and the matissa again. So for the exponent we need to subtract 127, so the bias. So that is for the first number, 3, uh, 4, and the second number, 1. For the mantissa, we also need to add the leading bit again. And here a bunch of zeros. Yeah, then we have the first bit, the first step done. Now we need to add the exponents. So that is 5. and we need to multiply the mantissa. So in this case, it's quite easy. Place like that. Now we need to convert it back. So here's our sign bit. Then you we just need to add 127 again. Then we remove the leading bit. And now we just need a bunch of zeros again. And we're done with multiplying. Then here is a little special case. Now we have a negative exponent. 
if you have a negative exponent of course you have to normalize it again so in this case you have to subtract the exponent from 127 so let's do that as well so we have our 4 again from before we already calculated that and now we have our 1 but a minus 1 so I'll mark that with a red rule here so that is minus 1 and we have 4 now we have to add them again but as you probably know from maths plus m plus plus minus equals minus so it's 4 minus 1 that gives us the result of 3 and that is uh, the right exponent then another special thing we have here is that in this case we have the, the, um, the, the mantissa from 1.1 in both cases and the multipl when multiplying we get the result of 1 0 0 1 now our problem and here we have another spe special case we have this as the mantissa and now when multiplying you'll probably notice that our result uh, beyond the right exponent over here is a, ba is a bit more than one so what we have to do is move the right exponent to the left once and add one to the exponent so four so now I'm gonna show you how to divide division is pretty similar to multiplying only thing we ha really have to do is denormalize again like before so 1 and 3 but now instead of adding the numbers we are going to subtract them from each other so in this case our result is 2 and now we're gonna denormalize the act the mantis again so that is those numbers and a bunch of zeros here now we need to divide those two numbers and we got another special case that is our result and you'll see we don't have a leading one right now so what we have to do is move the red x point one to the right and if you can remember moving it to the right once is decreasing so this time we have to subtract by 1 and now our final exponent is 1 so now we just need to add our bias again so that is in this case one hundred and twenty-eight and our mantissa we have to remove the leading one again and add a bunch of zeros and this is how you divide I think the um, sign bit for both multiplying and when dividing is pretty easy we just need to x or both so if both are zero then the final result is also zero our is one is one of them negative then our result is negative uh, both negative then our result is positive kind of like math so nothing special there so now I'm gonna show you how to calculate the square root first as always we have to denormalize -normal number so 3 oops and the mantissa now we have to divide our um, exponent um, through 2 because we are calculating the square root so that is oops 
1.5 this one is from the for a 0 0.5 though gonna remove and instead put the radix point one to the right and now we're gonna calculate the um, mantissa by ca by calculating the square root of the mantissa so in that case the square root is one point one exactly our result so now we just have to add the bias again so that is one two three four five six seven damn rain and remove the leading bit just add the one here and that's how you calculate the square root now to the very last operation addition and subtraction finally this is one of, is this harder than multiplying and dividing and that's why I chose it last so let's start for only thing really in common with the artist is that of course we have to denormalize the number again so that is one a uh, three and one or two numbers and I'll leave a little bit more space you'll see why here is our red x point three oh oh one so we have to add our leading bits there would be a bunch of zeros but we don't care about them right now okay so addition we can't just simply add those two numbers because the problem would be with the um, that this zero, uh, w this one could be two, it could be four, it could be eight. It de all depends on exponent, but we can't just multiply them from the matrix itself. So we have to m um, modify the matrix first, so b before we can add them. So now, if you imagine, like in school back then a little line here is one yeah here is one here is two here is three here is four our num our bigger number is here so three and here is our other number one and how many times do we have to shift so what's the difference between those two that is easy to calculate we just need to subtract both numbers so our result is two you always have to sort the bigger and the smaller one so if the smaller one would have the exponent free you would have to swap those around and subtract them so our result is 2 and now we will we have to wait I'll quickly read that we have to shift the red x point to the left by that amount so 1 and 2 so that is our new number then le let's rewrite them with the red x point correctly aligned so that is that number and now we can finally add those two numbers and get our result which is 1.100 and that is our metism and for the exponent we will just use the exponent of the bigger number so just one one and our zeros now if might happen sometime that um, may be a carry so that maybe that is our mantissa we're adding them like that and then it would end up like this
So what we would have to do in that case is move the rex point 1 to the left again and add 1 to the exponent. So now we can just add the bias again. Remove those special cases. And yeah, so our final number is one zero 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 zero. Then that is the end of the exponent. Here we have to hide the leading bit again. So that number is not shown. And that is our number with a bunch of zeros in this direction. For subtracting, it's basically the same, except that you subtract those two numbers. And if maybe the result could look like this, for example, then you have to move the red X point again till it's here and then in this case we'll shift the three times and then subtract three minus three uh, then subtract three from the exponent so yeah that is basically addition and subtraction and yeah I hope this whole video kinda explained how floating point works and yeah now you can hop to the second video. If you didn't know yet, know yet how it works, so I'll see you there.